Todd, welcome uh, to the suite. Hey, the broker owner. It's good Happy to, to be you. here. Yeah. Uh, so I want to invite Todd up here. We're here at the Narcom Broker Owner event uh, at the Mirage in Las Vegas, as you guys can see. And uh, Todd and I recently started working together. So I've been learning a lot about your business and you know the sales process that you went through. And so first of all, why don't you let everybody know what kind of company you have? Sure, uh, I own uh, GTL Real Estate, which is uh, mostly a single family, uh, small multifamily property management company. We're headquartered in uh, Atlanta, but we also have a market in uh, Daytona Beach. Uh, which is kind of a newer market for us, but we're trying to expand there. So, uh, you know, yeah. the focus is single family residential and uh, it's, you know, we're at about 400 units now total. Okay, great. So, so two markets, one's new, but you're actually pretty mature as a company. You've been in Atlanta for a Oh yeah, while. yeah, we're, we've been in business for uh, 11 years there now. It's, it's a pretty established company in the metro Atlanta area. You know, going down to Florida about a year and a half or so ago was kind of a new thing for us, expanding into a new market. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we're definitely, you know, an established company. That's exciting. Tell me about your sales team and kind of the evolution that you've gone through. Yeah, sure. So we've always used uh, licensed agents. So what we've always done is go out and look for agents who were doing sales before, but we're looking for more consistent income, sort of like what most of us do in this business. Yep. We're here because we like the recurring revenue. Get away from the transaction. Exactly. So we found agents who, you know, were kind of aligned with that and we put them into the position and they kind of have a territory that they're responsible for. So that worked really well for us for a long time, but uh, it's kind of slowed down over the last couple of years. So, you know, what was kind of a disorganized process and everything before, um, you know, that's that's kind of come to the forefront as, you know, it's not quite so easy with all the lead flow. Like a lot of us in entrepreneurship, you were successful not because of the process in the sales department or anything you were necessarily doing, but just because there was so much demand that it was just kind of like yeah. grab on to as much as you can. Absolutely, you know, much less competitive environment during those years and there was yeah. just, you know, it was a flood of business. So, and you know, I'm I'm not a salesperson by nature, you know, I'm an introvert, you know, sales is not my thing. So, you know, crafting that process was never something that I could really do, yeah. um, you know, let alone, you know, effectively manage it and everything. So, you know, it was, it just kind of happened by chance, just all the leads we had and everything we were able to grow in spite of the fact that I didn't have a really nailed down sales process. And then at some point the lead flow kind of dried up so to speak right and so when did you realize that maybe you had to make some changes? I'd say it was probably about a year and a half ago I started really you know, paying a lot more attention to our, our client acquisition costs and all that things I hadn't really monitored that well before mm -hmm. um, but now that I was paying more attention to that I could see that this, you know, it wasn't as profitable as I thought it was. You know, when you're not really looking at the numbers the way you should, you think, you know, we're adding all these doors and everything, everything's yeah. great. But then when you figure in churn and everything else, you realize, oh, it's not as pretty a picture as I thought it was. Uh, so then I started digging into it a little bit more and that's when we kind of decided we needed to do something different here to kind of firm up this process. And so what were some of the mistakes or any mistakes that you think you made with the way that you were compensating or managing the sales team initially? Yeah, so I mean, the we've always used a, a commission split basically not just for you know the leasing fee uh, but for ongoing revenue so when management fees come in our BDMs get a portion of that so you know we always had it you know as a, as a pretty even split so that you know they were making good money yeah. long after this person was signed on years after okay. years oh yeah. yeah definitely so I mean that created a situation where you know a salesperson someone usually motivated by you know money mm -hmm. trying to close and get more deals to bring money coming in um, they were getting that anyway without having to close yeah the motivating factor has to to be there and when that went away I, you know it, it didn't quite work right so we had to tweak that and kind of redesign how we were compensating yeah. our BDMs. Great okay so what were the changes that you made or what are the changes you're going to make going forward? Well a lot of it was uh, you know starting to monitor those KPIs more and basing it around that so mm -hmm. instead of just saying you know you get you know a split of this money instead it's the amount of the split you get is based on your performance on these key metrics as we change the process you know the you know the same people I think will do a fine job with it um, they just need to have that structure there to actually make it work yeah and so going forward now obviously you called us we started working together you know what's your vision for the sales team you know a year from now a year from now I'd like to have a really nailed down uh, clear sales process that everybody's following the same way mm -hmm. uh, which I'm really big on former airline pilot I'm all about systemization standardization so I want that for the sales team like we have in the rest of the business and we don't yet but that's the goal to have it there so that you know a year from now I can see you know the KPIs are in line with where they should be the growth is where it should be you know I want to be growing five to ten doors a month you know I want to see that happen you know yeah. a year from now last question I want to ask you is uh, you know what made you decide that it was time to 
spend both the time and the money to systematize the sales process? Uh, you know, a lot of it was uh, listening to Jordan Wayla. You know, he's been talking a lot lately about how this part of the business, you know, the sales and marketing side doesn't get the same focus that so the, you know, the operational side of the business does. And, and that's especially true with me because my mind is operationally focused. So that's yeah. what I focus on when I'm running the company. So, you know, when I started to hear more of that from Jordan, that made sense to me, you know, that that needed to be, you know, that needed to get more focus. Yeah. So, you know, once I decided Decided that it was just you know who do I talk to about that who's the expert in that area and, and of course Jordan recommended you so that's that's kind of how we kind of connected and started working yeah. together all right well, excited about that I think we're gonna get you there within the year and and the good news is, is don't feel bad because it's the operationally minded business owners who neglect sales because it's out of their wheelhouse and equally so it's the sales minded entrepreneurs who neglect sales because they just think <laughs> they can do it all themselves so, sure so nobody ever gets around to systematizing <laughs> so. <laughs> so kudos to you for doing that yeah, so I appreciate it yeah all right Todd Enjoy the event? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Thank you.